and in this moment, I swear, we are infinite. Welcome to episode 84 of the Backlot 605 podcast. I am one of your hosts. I am Casey Kelderman. I'm Brian Mensing. Brian, how you doing? I'm confused. Is it 84? I thought it was 83. Uh, what did I say? 84? Well, 80, it's 83 then. I don't know. <laughs> I don't We're know. in the 80s. <laughs> we have too many episodes to do. Uh, that's why both of us are co-hosts to keep each other sane. I think that's why we're doing this. <laughs> I, I like it. I'll take it. Yeah, so episode 83. Let's get that right. Uh, this is our, our first episode in our LGBTQ uh, miniseries, and I'm excited to do this one because uh, the main topic for this week is the movie The Perks of Being a Wallflower, a film that uh, I have not watched since I was in high school, and it is a high school film. Um, and we are joined by two guests on the show to talk about this movie and uh, some of the, the upcoming movies that we are excited to check out here in the next week. Uh, first up, we have uh, Jimmy... Diaz. Jimmy, how's it going? Yes. Pretty good. How about yourself? Great. And we are also joined by Cody Engel. Cody, how you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Good. Yes. We are very happy to have both of you guys on the show. And uh, before we get into like the movie stuff, I just want to talk a, a little bit about uh, you guys. Um, so I'll start with, with Jimmy. Can you uh, explain what, what you do for a living and then give us uh, if you can, your favorite movie of all time, if you have just one. All right. Um, well, I am the uh, service manager for a locally owned furniture company here in South Dakota. Um, they've been in business since 1880. So before South Dakota was even a state, um, it's been in the family the entire time. So it's, it's a great business that's not going anywhere. Um, it's actually my first time working in the furniture industry. I've been there now for five years but I uh, truly enjoy it. And every day is a new learning opportunity with a different amount, different vast of amount of furniture that comes through and um, the customizations that these, these customers make um, are just astonishing at times. Um, but the team and I, uh, we basically fix your furniture if you have a problem with it after it's in your home or you just have some general questions about it. Um, my favorite all-time movie is The Green Mile. Great pick. Great good, pick. good, good, good pick. Yes. So what, what is it about the Green Mile that, that you really love? Um, truly, it's to not judge a book by its cover, um, especially with everything that's going on now. Um, it's, it's perfect. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's an African-American individual who gets accused of murdering these two girls because he tries to save them with his special ability. And um, they don't look at that. They just look at his skin color. And because of that, a special individual is taken from this world and each and every, each and every one of us is special. So um, yeah, that, that movie, it, it has a lot deep, deeper meaning to it, but we don't have time for that today. <laughs> yeah. We will have to, when we go, we're, we'll probably eventually bring a, bring it back to, to Stephen King at some point. And we'll have to bring you on for the green mile. Cause I, I love that film and would love to just do a deep dive on that movie. Especially, oh, yeah. Like you said, right now it's uh, maybe more uh, important than ever to watch that movie. Yes. What about you, Cody? What do you do for a living? And what is your favorite movie of all time? Uh, so I work um, at a clinic full time. Um, I do mainly scheduling referrals, uh, a lot of like paperwork and stuff there. Um, and then I also work at Lucky's Bar downtown. Um, as a bartender, I've been there for about four and a half years now. Um, so it's really fun. I love meeting new people for the most part. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Um, but no, we, we've had a really good time there and um, we've, we've been reopened uh, for about four weeks now. So slowly readjusting to things, um, especially now that all the restrictions are lifted, just trying to, you know, figure out how to maneuver and navigate around stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's been good um, and it's a great place to work. You know, downtown's a great location. So I've had a lot of fun there. Uh, favorite movie of all time, such a hard choice. Um, but I think my probably my favorite movie of all time is a fairly recent um it's a monster calls it's based off of a british novel like a british children's novel um but it's just really well done it kind of um incorporates um you know different artistic styles of movies in it um, with animation mixed with uh, like real life um and it's just got a great storyline and great acting 
Um, and it's also my favorite book ever. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember watching, cause that was what, that was 20, 2017, 2018, right in there. Yeah. I was like, it was right around that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? I remember really, really enjoying that one. That one's a lot of fun. It is. Yes. Um, yeah. But uh, Brian, do you have any other questions before we jump into uh, what's coming soon since we don't have any big news articles for this week? <clears throat> yeah. Why didn't you tell Hollywood to give us some news this week? <laughs> There was more pressing matters than movie news this week. Maybe a little bit. A little bit. And that's all right with us. Uh, I think that is one thing, like, that's fine not to have movie news for a week. If, yep. You know, there's more important things in the world than us nerds on the internet talking about <laughs> movies. But we're going to do it anyway, because we need, a, we need a break from reality. I think that's one of the biggest things I like doing with this. It's just a, it's a break from reality. Uh, and some of those break from reality movies that are coming out this week uh, the first one that we got here is The King of Staten Island. So this is the semi-autobiographical uh, movie about Pete Davidson, uh, directed and co-written by Judd Apatow. Uh, this hits VOD on June 12th, which was uh, originally supposed to be its um, theatrical release. But this is, again, one of those movies that is going to go straight to VOD, skip the theatrical route right now. And I'm... I'm I'm pretty excited for this movie. I, I want to check it out. Uh, Pete Davidson hasn't won me over yet on SNL, but I, I like his, I know a bit of, of his backstory and I'm, I'm excited to see where that can go. And I like Judd Apatow movies and maybe this is a, a good combination for him. When, when I first heard about this movie, the first thing I immediately thought was no pun intended that this was just going to be a train wreck ready to happen. Um, I do like Pete Davidson. I like him on SNL, but I didn't see how this was going to translate very well. And then I saw the very first trailer for it, and I was absolutely sold to the point where they weren't making it a dumb comedy. They weren't trying to go – it's going to have its laughs. There's no doubt about that, but they were definitely taking a more serious route with this. And that's what made, really had me change my mind on seeing this movie. In fact, I'm actually look, very much looking forward to it. I think it actually looks very well done. Yeah, the only yeah, thing oh go ahead. I'm really excited for it too, actually. I'm excited to see Pete Davidson um see what he does on the big screen. Mm -hmm. The big little screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only thing that kind of wor worries me, and this is more of a Judd Apatow thing, his movies are really long for comedies. This one's two hours and sixteen minutes, which is about on par for a Judd Apatow movie. They're always over two hours for his comedies and but I think he does, he blends comedy and drama really well. And maybe that'll, mm -hmm. that'll warrant that, that time frame for the two hours and 16 minute runtime. Uh, what else we got? <laughs> Artemis Fowl, which will hit Disney Plus on June 12th. Uh, directed by Kenneth Branagh, starring Colin, uh, Colin Farrell, Josh Gad, and Judy Dench. So this one, again, I remember seeing the posters, at least for this one, in the theater. Uh, Disney pulling the trigger on the Disney Plus uh, uh, train and, and letting this one go right to, to Disney Plus. What uh, are you guys excited for this this movie at all? Um, I actually haven't seen a preview for this movie, so I I don't know. I'd actually have to check it out. I'm do you have Disney with Colin Farrell? Do you have Disney Plus? I do. Well, see, there you go. I, 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 I honestly, I think it, I think it looks really good. It's one of those ones that I do feel that Disney plus might be the better market for this movie. I don't really know how well it was going to translate big screen wise. If this was going to be a new tent pole for, for Disney. Um, if it was, or is going to be, it's kind of sad that it has to be stuck where it is right now. But um, I do think that, you know, it's almost like, Oh, I almost want to say like James Bondish, like the Kingsman, like a kid's version of it because of the, like the, the spy aspect of it. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing at least, I hope, I hope it does well. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by it. I read the book um, as a kid, but it's been years. So I'm interested to see how they correlate that. Yeah. I actually, I think Disney plus is a good place for this. Because mm -hmm. it's not real. I mean, people know the name because it is based on a book and it has the Disney brand attached to it, but it doesn't have a superhero in it or uh, <laughs> or is a Pixar movie. So I think that's 
it might play better on Disney Plus. It might do pretty well for for this movie. Maybe not as good as it would, you know, in the, as far as box office, but uh, I think it might get more eyes at least on this movie. And then you can get a sequel a few years down the road that it will uh, make its way to theaters. I'd be okay with that. Uh, the next one that we got here is the next uh, Spike Lee joint, uh, The Five Bloods, which hits Netflix June 12th. Uh, it is about four black Vietnam vets head back to Vietnam to dig up buried gold. Uh, this one has Chadwick Boseman in it, Black Panther himself. So The Five Bloods, Spike Lee, what do you guys think of this movie? That sounds actually pretty interesting. Um, that, that Just right when you started going into it, I was like, really? So... This sounds like something I would definitely catch on Netflix. I I, I just say I'm trying to remember even the last Spike movie, movie that I sat down and just watched. It's not that I don't like Spike Lee. It's just that he definitely is one of those ones where you kind of have to be in the mood for his kind of movies because they're very very political. They're very there's there's a there's a certain tone that Spike Lee presents, and um, I, I I enjoy his movies, but I can't I can't even tell you the last time I even sat down and watched one. So maybe this will be good give me a good opportunity to uh, actually sit down and maybe go through some of his movies. Um, I was always a big fan. Uh, I always liked the Twenty Fifth Hour, you know, and some of his older ones too. Yeah, I have actually never watched a Spike Lee joint. Uh, I don't know. It just I'm I'm a little younger than where and when he started out in the nineties. Uh, Dude, I'm, I'm all, I'm almost too young for that. For, <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> I should, kidding. I was, I, I was not watching those kind of movies when well, he started making no. them. <laughs> uh, I always knew the name of Spike Lee more uh, for the basketball side of things. Cause my dad would always watch basketball, but uh, yeah, I'm, I actually want to do a, a deep dive into his filmography now to kind of prepare for this movie. Uh, do the right thing is, is, is in, I've seen it all over the internet in the last week as, as a movie to a must watch movie for, mm-hmm. for the times right now. And I think that's, that's where I'm going to start with this. And then, uh, I think this is a very good time, just a good time for this movie to come out, you know, a new Spike Lee joint, uh, during this political climate. And I think it's going to do very well on there. And, uh, I don't see, you know, this being a problem for, for, his his first venture into streaming being right on Netflix. It's going to hit at the perfect time. It's going to get a lot of eyes on this movie. I think it's just a, a win all around for everyone involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the next two that we got here, uh, we have another installment of the Hulu Into the Dark series uh, for the month of June. Uh, this one is titled Good Boy. I haven't watched a whole lot of the Into the Dark stuff. Uh, this is like Hulu and Blumhouse's uh, once a month, it's a, it's themed per month, uh, horror anthology type series. I've only watched a handful of them. I'll wait till reviews kind of come out to, to check this one out. Uh, there's not even a synopsis for it. So these are pretty under the radar movies when that, whenever they come out. Uh, I didn't know they, I didn't even know they were even a thing until you put it into this article. Really? <laughs> oh, they've been doing no. it for, I, I trust me. I, I, I looked it up and I'm just going through lists and lists of, of I'm like, mm-hmm. How did I miss all of this? <laughs> yeah, they've been doing it for about t- almost two years now, I think. It's, they've been doing pretty well with these. And yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll wait till the reviews come out because I've only checked out the ones here and there, like I said. So uh, this other uh, one that we got here um, is a Shutter film, Warning, Do Not Play, South Korean horror film about a film supposedly <laughs> made by a ghost. A film made by a ghost? I, I don't even know about this one. <laughs> <laughs> you uh this this sounds like it's right up your alley south korean horror film <laughs> yeah uh i don't know what to what to think of this movie i'm gonna read the full synopsis here just so i can kind of get a a handle on what this movie is actually doing uh, a rookie film director uh has been preparing a horror film for the past eight years one day she hears about a movie which was banned uh, she wants to know about the film. She begins to look for it. Uh, her search takes her to meet a, another person who directed the film. Uh, they warn her not to see it and to forget about it, but she ignores the warning. Her obsession with the movie leads uh, to a bizarre and horrible case. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Interesting. Seems interesting. I've not heard of it until well, we were preparing for this episode, and... Uh, 
I don't know. I might might check it out. Seems kind of fun. Sounds a little crazy. Is what it yeah. sounds like. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of seg the way this into. We'll get into our main discussion, but uh, Shutter just dropped the uh, documentary Scream Queen: My Nightmare on Elm Street, which just came out uh, earlier this year on VOD. Uh, it is about Mark Patton, the lead uh, actor in, in the Nightmare on Elm Street 2, uh, and about his journey after the film and how it has led him to where he is now. Um, yeah, this is a fantastic watch. Even if you're not really a fan of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, this is such an interesting watch to see uh, a rising actor from the 80s and after the weird critical and, and fan reception for a nightmare on Elm street Two, how he kind of just dropped off the face of the earth and only came back, uh, to, 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 to prominence like four or five years ago, which is really, really interesting. And to see how he views all of his time making the movie and where he is now because of that, it's a, it's a very interesting watch. All right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's that's only going to interest certain people, I'm sure. <laughs> but I, I thought it was a very fascinating movie, even if you have not watched, you know, any of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. It's just a really good uh, documentary about a, a guy's life and how he fit into the Hollywood system. It's just a, a very interesting documentary. Um, but yeah, that's going to lead us, uh, I guess, into our main topic for this week, which is the film uh, from 2012, The Perks of Being a Wallflower. So this movie was a selection by Cody. This was your movie of choice. Why, why, why Perks of Being a Wallflower? Yeah, I am. Um, well, I just love this movie so much. Um, I probably watched it a dozen times um, just throughout the years. And to me, for me, um, the reason I chose it, I think it's just such a great story about, uh, I mean, it, it is a high school movie. Um, you know, it's about kind of a group of outcasts that just, um, come together and form this friendship, uh, this little group um, together. And I think, um, especially when talking about LGBTQ um, plus issues, um, you know, one of the main characters, Patrick, just kind of his journey through high school and um, the bullying, uh, the secrecy um, with his, uh, you know, football uh, player, kind of semi-boyfriend. Um, I don't know, I just thought it was a very, it's like very authentic. Um, and I feel like it didn't try to necessarily hundred percent like dramatize the experience but rather just tried to be like real and authentic about it what you know a kid in the 90s might have had to go through um in high school and um, yeah and I just love how they like you know it's, it's all about um being a wallflower you know somebody who people don't typically look at and just kind of you know the main character's journey through um finding those friendships and really kind of coming to age you know yeah, this this movie, as I said, 2012, uh, written and directed by Stephen Chabowski. Um, his previous other credits, uh, he did a a film that came out in 1995. That was his only other direct directing uh, before this film, uh, which is a movie called The Four Corners of Nowhere, 1995. Didn't direct anything in 2012, which was this movie. Uh, he would go on to uh, direct Wonder a few years ago. Um, but he also uh, wrote Beauty and the Beast, the live action remake for Disney, um, which also starred one of the movie stars, Emma Watson. Uh, this movie also stars uh, The Flash, Ezra Miller and Logan Lerman. Uh, Paul Rudd is in this. Uh, Nina Dobrev. Um, huge cast in this movie. And uh, yeah, so like like we said, this is this is a movie about high school and growing up and maturing and the high school journey. Uh, and it's about an introverted freshman who is taken under the wings of, of these, I believe they're, they're step siblings in this movie. Uh, they're mm -hmm. two seniors. They invite him into their friend group and he kind of uh, experiences the high school journey through, through those uh, eyes and lens. Um, so Jimmy, what about you? Is this the first time you actually watched this movie or had you seen Perks of Being a Wallflower before? Um, actually, no. Um, this was the first time that I watched it and watching it, um, Cody's absolutely right. It, it, they didn't um, over exaggerate the high school experience. That's, I mean, the, you have that one uh, individual who's part of the community who's out there and doesn't care what others think, but you have that jock or that individual who doesn't want others to know, who hides in the closet. Um, and 
when when the, the, the cafeteria scene when his friend trips him and you know he confronts him about it um you kind of see those tensions rise between the two and you know there that no matter what you say or what you do he's going to remain in the closet and you have that other individual who's going to continue to live his life and not care what anybody thinks because he truly doesn't um but the whole overall story um going going through from start to finish you see what high school is like for somebody who's not the popular one the depression um the hard time making the friends and when you develop those friends and then they leave um i've been that individual when you make friends and then they leave you just go down this spiral and you're not sure what to do and that's exactly what happened to him and um yeah i like cody said they just everything is right on yeah, I uh, I watched this movie one time in high school. We had like a movie party, and and one of the guys let his his girlfriend pick the movie. And I I remember I I was not into teen movies as a teen, and I was really not into teen out. movies now. What? <laughs> You're not I'm into, into I'm into good teen movies. I'm very harsh on teen <laughs> movies, uh, but this movie it won me over watching it this time around. Uh, I loved this this film. I feel like uh, there is a character, or at least. Uh, a certain situation or moment within every character in this movie that everyone can relate to. There's, there's, Mm -hmm. you know, the, no matter what you're going through at at the, even the, even now out of high school, you can relate to these, these kids. uh, But especially in high school, there's, there's certain things that happen in this movie that everybody can just relate to. Um, I mean, for, for me personally, I, I mean, I, I related a lot with the, the main character where you don't feel like you fit in and you're still trying to figure it out. And, uh, I think one of my favorite relationships out of this movie, and I think we we definitely need to get into how everybody connects and everybody's relationship in this movie. Um, I really liked the relationship between Charlie, the main character, and his uh, English teacher played by Paul Rudd. I really felt for that relationship. It really felt like a, a great mentor in his life. Um, the few scenes that they have together, Paul Rudd is just, he's really good in this movie. He's still fun Paul Rudd, but he has a, he has a more relatability to him. Feels more like a real person than the heightened Paul Rudd of like the Seth Rogen comedies or, or Parks and Rec. Um, so I, I just really felt for that relationship. This might be probably the most serious I think I've ever seen Paul Rudd. Um, I mean, for the sake of his movies, I mean, he definitely does drama and whatnot, but of the, 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 like the serious, serious stuff that he's done, I probably have not seen it, but this is probably the most down to earth Paul Rudd I think I've seen in a long time. Um, one thing I at least wanted to, to make mention of being the fact that, um, I've only just watched this movie and it's only been within the last two and a half hours that I've actually watched this movie. Um, I actually, it pains me to say that this has been in my digital library for probably two, maybe three years, if not better. And to say the fact that I only just watched now, I I actually kind of feel bad that I didn't do this here sooner because it is a phenomenal movie. Um, To kind of make point to the the dramatization, the the impact of these characters in this movie, the one thing I want to say is that there's so many, I think, I, I really think there's so many kind of almost subgenres within this teen movie in terms of the characters, some of the storyline, the depression, the, the way the movie even ends kind of thing. And you real and when you were talking about like the aunt and everything like that, there's so many things that go into this movie. There's so many layers to this film. Um, and I just, I think it's something to, I, I feel like it needs to be a movie that I think anybody needs to see. Cause I think any person could probably take away something from this film. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of my, uh, just a, so we talked about Paul Rudd last week in a very different role in Wet Hot American Summer. Uh, you're doing. <laughs> yeah. How do we go from that to this? Yeah. I don't know. It, it, uh, it's a, small, that was a happy accident. Yeah. A small little connection that we have. Uh, like I said, he's great. I think everybody's great in this movie. Uh, mm-hmm. Ezra Miller is, uh, he is super fun and hyper energetic in this movie. You can see fantastic. why, why he was chosen as the flash. Uh, for this uh, Logan Lerman is, is really good in this movie um, I wish he would do he hasn't gone on to do a whole lot after being uh, Perks of a Walk and I'd like to see him take on some more uh, leading roles and I think he's he's really great in this movie maybe he got burned by Percy Jackson I, 
I think that was the franchise given to him, and uh, that one did not work out well. Right. I know. He, I remember he was on the short list to play the, um, Mar- the MCU Spider Man. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he would have been. He. I mean, I feel like he's 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 pretty Peter Parker in this movie. Yeah. He, he, He's very Peter Parker, but I don't know if I can see not Tom Holland right now. <laughs> well, that's a podcast for a different day. <laughs> uh, some of the scenes that kind of stuck out to me, uh, one of the first ones was the introduction to the shop class. One, because Tom Savini is the shop teacher, and I have to bring up Tom Savini. Uh, he's fun in this little role. He's a lot of fun. Uh, we get to see uh, the first introduction to Ezra Miller's character, who's just a, a ball of energy uh, has a very carefree attitude, especially how he talks to the, the shop teacher uh, is a lot of fun. I like the, the banter that he has with him. Yes. Oh, the banter, the banter is fantastic. Especially mm-hmm. the, the introduction to Ezra Miller where he's, he's, he's uh, taking the, the, the oil pencil or whatever and painted on the, the fake goatee to mimic being Tom Savini. That's a good way to introduce him into this film. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just I think just the whole the the character dynamic between Ezra Miller and Tom Zavini. Um, anytime they're in the shop class, um, when we're talking about the clock or anything like that, or when we get to the very end, like that their play off each other's is fantastic. Mm-hmm. But I, I I do think that a lot of that is just the the energy that Ezra brings to this film. Yeah, that's. I think that's a much. His character is a much needed levity to this movie, where he 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 adds humanity to it, but he's also the comic relief. But he's never like the butt of the joke. He is always the one giving the jokes out. He's never like uh, like in any other teen comedy. He would be like the 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 stiffler or the the fat friend, you know, falling over or whatever he's not that he's a much more integral part of this story than anything. And I think that's what really stands out in this movie. Cause like I said, I'm really harsh on teen movies because I feel, especially modern ones, it's all right, which teen is, is dying from some disease. I'm glad this movie doesn't have that. Uh, and I'm glad that the, there's just really strong relationships throughout the movie. Um, so I'm going to throw it off to Cody. I got a question and I'll ask Jimmy the same question. What is your favorite relationship out of this movie? You know, friendship, mentorship, whatever relationship, what is the one that really sticks out to you? Um, I think for me, it's probably, I just love the relationship between, um, Ezra Miller and Emma Watson's characters. Um, I just think, you know, I think for me, it's kind of on a personal level. I have step siblings as well. Um, and I am obviously, uh, I'm a gay male too. So I found a lot of like similarities, you know, kind of meshing the families, blending the families together. And, um, just the way that they kind of play off of each other. I love the scene when they're at the dance and their song comes on and they're like living room routine, living room routine. Um, so I just think like they together added, um, so just such an important like you know you talked about Ezra Miller is such an integral part to this movie and I totally agree with that statement I think he helps bring it all together and I love like all of the scenes with him um his character and Emma Watson's character together um are just yeah I just think that they do such a good job the chemistry between them is really great even when they're with their group of friends like you just I I always find myself like looking to see what those two are gonna do like what are Patrick and Sam going to do? Like, what are their characters going to do? What are they going to say? Um, and just seeing how much they cared for Logan Lerman's character, you know, how much they wanted um, him to be a part of their group. Um, so, yeah, I just loved their relationship. Jimmy, what about what about you? What re- relationship really stands out? Um, I would definitely have to say the relationship between Sam and Charlie. Um, you know, how he's afraid to speak his feelings and he's just again being that wallflower um but they know each of them like each other and at the end when um you know they kind of admit to their feelings it's 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 nice to see that actually blossom and for her to be that um mentor and friend you know and hearing the story of um charlie's friend just killing himself and you know she realizes this is where he needs friends right now. He, he needs somebody. And then that's when she goes um, to her brother and is like, hey, let's 
let's get to be his let's become his friend and then they make the toast to him and then it's all history from there but i definitely had to say the relationship between those two brian what about you what's the one that really stuck out to you in watching this movie um i mean to be honest i think it's just the 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 three of them all together um i mean you i mean you really you see that Lerman's character is obviously the, the center to this film, but I do think that the, the chemistry between him and Emma Watson and him and Miller and just all three of them combined, like, I don't think, it, 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 it sounds weird, but I think that if this would have, may have been cast differently, I don't know if this movie would have worked as well, um, just because their chemistry and the relations that they show between those three characters all together um, is what basically is what keeps this movie true to its form and keep, makes it what it needs to be. Yeah, I agree. I think all th- all three of the leads have have fantastic chemistry with each other. Whether it be them three together or each of them separate or just mm-hmm. two at a time, all it, it just it, it's firing at all times with with all three of the these actors in this movie. Um, another one of my favorite. I would love to see these three do something else together. Yes. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, another one that I really, I like Charlie and Patrick's relationship, especially towards the, the third act of the movie where they where where uh, at this point, Patrick doesn't have his sort of boyfriend, the, the weird relationship that he had with the football player. Uh, however, that relationship was, was, you know, present i don't know how like what their relationship was going to be after high school it didn't seem like it was going to last either way um and i like that he finds a friend in charlie the way charlie found a friend in him because and then they go out on these these drives together because that was that was my high school like we didn't have anything going on there was nothing to do me and my friends we would get in the car and drive and that was that was high school to, to me getting in the car and driving somewhere and that, I, I really like the, the relationship between those two. And then a, a, a scene that um, Cody brought up was the dance scene uh, in the first half of the movie where they play Come On Eileen. I'm like, any, any movie that ha- knows how to use Come On Eileen is a, a win in my books. The, the one thing I will give this movie, and it's something that I, I tend to notice, and I, and I know I notice this more than you would hear, Casey. Can, um, I get, can I guess what it is? What's that? It has a fantastic soundtrack. Yes. Yeah. It is an amazing soundtrack um, to the point where I immediately went to my Apple music and I'm like, oh, the movie's so old. It's one of those soundtracks that only has like two available songs. So I can't get the whole thing. <laughs> uh, no, it is it. I mean, to beginning and especially uh, when Emma Watson, when when she hears Heroes for the first time, um, it's just you you see just the the, the look on her face. I'm like. Come on, Eileen was just fantastic to begin with, but just the inter- introduction of heroes. I mean, yes. it, I think that song specifically has the double play in the fact that yes, it has a great soundtrack, but you can't tell me that. Well, and I know so because from what I was looking up, is he picked the song specifically for their parts in the movie, the where where he wanted them to be, and it was put there for a reason. That's yeah, I, I I love the use of that song in this movie, uh, mm-hmm. and I love the the little side plot in this movie that they can't figure out what the song is until she finally finds it on a, on a mixtape later yeah. right i don't i immediately heard, i immediately heard the very beginning of it and all i could just all i was trying to figure out is if it was the wallflowers or, or david bowie at first <laughs> you know i there was one part in particular that i liked is when um when charlie and other, um I, I guess you can say locations and Patrick breaks down and he tells that, uh, what did they call it, a suburbia story or something like that. Um, and basically he's telling the story about him and his, you know, boyfriend. Um, and he just, he just breaks down and, you know, Charlie and him have that moment together. Um, and you could just see that he has true emotions instead of that fun, go lucky guy making everybody laugh. He deep down is just, you know, hurt right now. Mm-hmm. I think that's the, uh, that is the biggest thing I take away. Cause I feel like every scene really has this is there's, there's certain relationships building throughout the movie. Just no matter what the scene is, a certain relationship and how that may relate to someone else later in the movie definitely does. Uh, 
one thing that how do you i want to know what you guys feel about this relationship is when charlie gets a girlfriend uh one of the friends in in the group who is also a senior uh but he doesn't he doesn't like her it's it's more of he doesn't want to you know be mean and and let her down uh and break up with her what did you guys think of that uh, little side plot in this movie um i <laughs> when when she said um oh it's wonderful to have you as my boyfriend or something and i was like wait what did what <laughs> like it, it was almost instant mm-hmm. i'm not the only on the one first thought that <laughs> <You're right. laughs> i was like wait what <laughs> And and he he played the type of character where you know he he's just trying to be accepted and he's afraid of hurting anybody and losing his friends. So he immediately is just like, well, I guess this is what it is, and I can't say anything because it's going to just ruin everything. And you know, I get where they were going with, but at the same time too, you're like, well, she was awfully just off to the races. I thought it was I thought it was very indicative of her character too. Mm-hmm. Like this is totally something her character would do. Like first date, you're my boyfriend now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, what else would you expect from a punk Buddha? A <laughs> punk Buddhist. <laughs> when the dad called her Buddha, my <laughs> like Buddha, can you move closer? Buddhist, can you move closer? Oh. <laughs> that was a great. But yeah, but no, I thought it was funny. It was a funny relationship, and yet, just you know, the that feeling of wanting to be accepted, I thought was really like evident through that he just didn't want to upset the you know what was happening or make anybody mad or hurt anybody because he just wanted to be a part of that group so badly i i I will say that when they were doing the truth or dare i was just gonna bring this up and and he goes and he goes in that little quick monologue (laughs) and i immediately was like that did not just happen and then all of a sudden it cuts back to that was all in his head i'm like i don't know how to take that (laughs) oh what what followed after that i was cringing so hard is when yes. Ezra Miller asks him you know truth or dare and he says truth uh, or no dare uh, and then he says kiss the prettiest girl in the room and he turns and kisses Emma Watson instead of his girlfriend I'm like cringe you, you know, and you knew it was going to happen though. oh yeah yeah but you got to feel like uh, I'm like was he was he put in that situation on purpose or was Patrick you know just expecting him to play nice and, and kiss his girlfriend i don't that, I, that just seemed just oh it, it got me cringing <laughs> i think because he's such that she he's um that nice guy they never suspected anything wrong between him and um what's her name mary i believe yes. mary um, Pepe, yeah um there was nothing wrong between them they had a great relationship going and when that happened it was like oh nope there's there's some skeletons there in that closet mm-hmm. that we don't know about it, it her her the only thing it, I would say, and this is just not to be on topic or whatnot, but it was really hard. To, there were at times I was having difficulty trying to keep her straight because whenever I see her, the only thing I can think of is her character from uh, Scott Pilgrim, <laughs> and like that was the only thing about her. And it, it's nothing to take away from her performance because I think she did a phenomenal job for exactly who her character was supposed to be. But all I could picture is her character from. Uh, from Scott Pilgrim. There's a, another thing I want to I want to bring up in this, and this is maybe just because I, I there were certain things I just loved because it things in my in my own life that I really love. One, there's a Joey Ramone Christmas song which I, I really dug. Uh, two is the the through line of them all performing Rocky Horror Picture Show together. I a couple love times. That. Yes. Yeah. I uh, when I when I first saw the Rocky Horror Picture Show, the first thing I thought was Casey's gonna like this part. Oh yeah. <laughs> no but you, but the one thing it did do though is like i immediately was like i almost kind of want to see a, a remake of rocky horror picture Show, and i want to see ezra miller in the tim curry role now oh yes yeah. he was really good as as, sh- as shadowing him he was really good and yeah he was thinking the same thing i'm like if anyone is going to take over i think he he could oh he would crush it yeah yes and I do love later in the movie, this is kind of a, a big, you know, breakout thing for Logan Lerman's character is when he gets to play Rocky in it. I think mm-hmm. that's a, a real coming out of your shell moment for, you know, I think everybody in high school has to have a certain moment, especially like to, to break out in front of a crowd somehow, some way. Like this is a really big step for him. And I love that he gets to play Rocky and Rocky Horror. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you could see that he he was very skeptical of it at first. He didn't want to. When she told him to take off his clothes, he was like, uh. <laughs> and right. but at the end of that scene, he was loving it. He mm-hmm. you could tell he was embracing it and um he knew he had the backing of his friends there. So You're right. Yeah. I would be terrified to play Rocky in Rocky Horror. <laughs> I would if I would have already passed out from stage fright. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I could play Dr. Frank. I would be more comfortable playing Dr. Frankenfurter more than, than Rocky. I don't know why. Don't know. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's round off this discussion. I want to throw it off to, to everyone in the room again. Uh, what is your favorite scene or moment in this movie? I will start with uh, Brian. What was your favorite scene out of this movie? Um, I would probably have to say when towards the what end of the first act beginning of the second when when emma watson's character goes and basically says you know relationships aside you know to show that she truly loved him as a person as an individual um to say that you know to know that he he knew that he needed somebody to basically tell him that they that they loved him um you know, just to, to know that, you know, she's always going to be there for him, regardless of relationships. Yeah, that is, I, I love that scene. That's a great scene. Jimmy, what about you? What was your favorite scene out of this movie? Um, <clears throat> I mean, I don't mean to be um, dark and twisted, but <laughs> the, uh, the part where Charlie actually realizes that he needs that mental health to get over what he faced as a child from his aunt um and everything that he's just kind of compiled um and that he had that moment or that breakdown in his room and you know he blacks out he wakes up in the hospital i i think that moment there when he realizes you know what i need that help and i'm gonna get that help and then his friends come back it's like it it just shows you that and it's cliche to say but it's true it gets better Mm mm-hmm that that when they and that's where i made the comment about this movie is so much more than just even a teen comedy a teen drama um all those layers that being one of them because like you you go through this movie and you realize he has this very close relationship with his aunt you feel bad you realize what's happened to the aunt everything like that but then you get to the very end you're just like you know i like her she's a really nice lady i know her from other things she's always a nice lady why she got to play such a dirt ball by the end of this movie (laughs) um hot twist dun, dun, dun. yeah exactly well no and when when they got to that aspect you start to realize it before they really pull the trigger and tell you that's what happened you're like it makes so much sense mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you definitely you go from really liking this lady for being the fact that she's that one person that he always was able to go to to oh that was just bad that's just wrong and no you're you're absolutely right jimmy i mean it's one of those ones where it's like things happen in life sometimes they're they're against our you know what we're able to handle at the time and whatnot but always being able to reach out and say hey i need help i can do th- i need i need to do this or can someone help me do this and whatnot and definitely knowing that they have that person to be able to say hey i need some help yeah cody how about you what, what is, what's your favorite scene from perks of being a wallflower yeah, I think uh, my favorite scene is, might be a little cliche, but that's okay, the ending um, where, and it's just because of the monologue um, that Logan Lerman's character has. There's so many lines. Um, you know, I originally read the book before the movie, and um, I just remember these lines even from the book, but, you know, he's gone through this development. He's, you know, come to the realization that he needs help, and and they're just all together in the tunnel, the, the infamous tunnel, and he says, um, you know, through his monologue, the idea of we are more than like a sad story. Um, And you know how he knows that one day people will say that like, um, you were just somebody's friend or somebody's father, somebody's, you know, son. Um, But the, the closing line of like, you know, but in this moment, like we are infinite, we feel infinite. And I just think it's such like a kind of like the nice bow um, to the movie, really just Mm -hmm. seeing like how these characters have all developed from, their storylines where they were and where they're going and um just the hope that it gives you know that there's more out there there's more than than being a sad story there's more than the bad things that happen to you there's more than um the bad experiences of high school or 
um, uh, just different things like that. I just think it's such, it's such a great scene. It's like always in, ingrained into my mind, like just him in the tunnel standing up, the monologue behind him. When when the scene plays of him in the back of the truck standing up, is it any? It, did it come across to anybody else that it, it's almost because he's kind of reserved when when they first start in the tunnel, he's sitting and he's facing the back of the truck. And then he slowly stands up. I almost took that whole scene there as that, as the whole movie recap. Basically, he's sitting there with his back against the wall, and then he kind of like lets go, and then he becomes who he is. I would say that was a great that is a great metaphor for the entire film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you look at his character from the the beginning of the movie or the first time when Emma Watson does it. There's no, no no chance his character at that point in the movie in his life does that himself, climbs in the back of the truck and, and stands up with his, his hands in the air, basically saying, I, I'm ready to take on take on the world. I'm ready to take on anything. And it's a I, I love that scene. I love the the first setup with it with Emma Watson's character and how that leads him forward into the, the, that final scene. And yes, that, that monologue is is really great. Um and one thing I want to piggyback off uh, I, what Jimmy said is what Emma Watson says in this movie. Um, when she goes off to college, she says, I've only been away for, what, what did she say, two months or two weeks? Um, and she's like, it gets better. It gets better than this. You know, high school was high school. It gets better. And I feel like uh, this movie should be recommended and required viewing for anyone in high school or anyone going through any of those struggles. It's a very important movie and I, I think like we all said it's there's someone to relate to or a moment in this movie that everyone can just relate to and latch on to and know that it gets better most definitely do we have any other uh, final thoughts on perks of being a wallflower highly recommend if you haven't seen it go watch it yes <laughs> yes I think a very high recommend from all of us very uh very just a great movie i was uh i hadn't seen a movie like this in a, in a while and it just uh, it was it feel good it made you feel emotions and like brian was joking he's like it made casey feel again i'm like yes it, did. <laughs> it, 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 it softened up that ice cold heart of yours casey. softened up my grinch horror heart yes it did uh so yes highly recommend perks of being a wallflower so let's wrap this thing up here um cody and jimmy uh do you guys want to if you want to give out your social media as you can or if there's anything you guys want to, to plug or promote please go ahead and do so um i will throw it off to to jimmy first um social media i just you can really find me online anywhere just jimmy diaz um if it's not jimmy diaz it's jimmy diaz zero two uh, twitter uh facebook instagram snapchat um it's pretty much the same across the board um and right now, as we celebrate Pride, I just ask that, you know, everybody come together and help celebrate um, LGD, excuse me, LGBTQ um, individuals and support them and be there during this time in our lives where we are uncertain what we're going to be facing with riots happening, um, our president. Um, but yes, just just be there for them and everybody and yeah awesome thank you so much for joining us jimmy this was a this was a lot of fun thank you for having uh, me. cody what about you where can people find you online yeah same um you can find me online uh just cody ingle i-n-g-l-e facebook instagram instagram twitter um and yeah i think i want to um snapchat as well i guess if you want to snap me that's cool <laughs> um, and I want to echo what Jimmy says and, you know, it, it's pride month and, um, it's, it's just a time, you know, to celebrate, uh, LGBTQ plus, um, individuals and, um, you know, it's, it's a little different with all the prides across the world being canceled. Um, but, you know, just, um, be on the lookout for stuff from, uh, you know, Sioux Falls pride and, um, we're, we're planning on doing some virtual events and just, we want to keep people connected as well. Um, you know, pride's, um, just about being connected within the community. So um, we just want to make sure people feel connected and, you know, allies as well. So um, we're excited about some of the opportunities we can present to, um, but yeah, feel free to reach out. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, let me know. 
Awesome. Thank you again for being on this and, and giving us this movie to watch this week. I, it, it was just a very potent movie to watch right now. I, I really mm-hmm. enjoyed it. Brian, and, yes. oh, go I, ahead. I, I, really what? Quick. Um, yeah. I do want to thank both you, uh, Casey, and Brian for actually spotlighting um, the, the community during yes. this month and helping us celebrate Pride. Like, like Cody said, Pride is definitely different this month. Um, across the world with the pandemic we have going on. So I thank you guys for doing this. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I would, I'd be the first one to say is Casey and I, even before we started doing the miniseries stuff and whatnot, and we had a retailer how we were doing everything because of the pandemic and whatnot. Um, but we already knew, God, how many, was it even last year when we decided that this was something that we were going to do to, to that mm-hmm. effect, Casey, because, um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but we updated our logo, um, here at the beginning yeah. of the month. I've been sitting on that logo for three, four months waiting for us to be able to even use it because I knew for absolutely, um, I'm a bit, I'm a big advocate of equality because, you know. I don't care if you're black, white, green, purple, gay, straight. I, you know, I just want everybody to be happy. I mean, there you get there's no there's nothing constructive in regards to being um, you know, to other people and being de- you know, degrading other people for whatever reason and um, you know, I just knew that this is something that I knew that if there's any way that we could wedge our our voice into being able to help promote and lift all this it was absolutely something we had to do yeah i am so happy so happy we can just do our just little part and just bring up certain movies you know maybe people had not watched or seen that bring these issues to the forefront and i'm i'm super excited to keep doing this and this was a great great start to the to this mini series that we do and mm-hmm. i i mean I, I don't know about you brian i i want to do this every june I'm okay with that. I think that we have to. I, there are so many uh, movies that need a spotlight like this and need to be represented. And I, I feel like this is just something we got, we got to keep doing. And I, I would love to keep doing. I'm, I'm having a blast doing it. And yes, I'm glad we can just uh, do our little part and just talk about movies because that's what me and Brian do best. And so I'm glad that's what we can bring bring to the table. And Yes, please do. I, I, I thank you both, Jimmy and Cody, for, for being on the show again. This was so much fun. Uh, again, go follow Sioux Falls Pride online on Facebook and Instagram and um, everywhere. Follow them on, on their website. Please do that and do so. Um, I did just see they dropped their 2020 uh, merch, which is really yeah. cool and great, and it looks fantastic. So uh, please go go uh, check that out. And um, Brian, let's uh, throw it off to you. Where can people uh, follow you and, and your doings online? Um, basically, Instagram and Letterbox for the movie stuff. Um, my Instagram's been kind of quiet for the last few days, so that might get slammed here one of these days. Um, but yeah, uh, Letterbox to get an idea of what I'm watching and what I'm reviewing and whatnot. Um, yeah. Yeah, and you can uh, you can follow me on Instagram, Casey underscore the horror guy. Uh, you can follow Backlot605 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Backlot605. Uh, also, you can find this podcast on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, and YouTube to see uh, all of our faces on, on the YouTubes. Uh, on the YouTubes. Also, check out uh, backlot605.com. That's where you can find our latest uh, coming soon articles with everything that is uh, coming soon to uh, select theaters and to streaming services, uh, a must read article every week, uh, for film fans. Uh, also check out our buddy Andy at fat dude digs flicks on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, and check out our buddy Corey Jacobson at someone ra- somewhat random movie collection on Instagram. Corey will be on an upcoming episode of the podcast. I'm very excited to have him back on for the first time since January, since our live show, Brian, we're going to have Corey back on. Oh, geez. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been a while. Been a it's minute. Been a hot minute. Yeah, um, and then next week we have another great film that we're going to be discussing. Uh, one I'm very excited for. Uh, it is the Joseph Gordon Levitt led film Mysterious Skin, and we will be joined by Jake Martin, who um, he has not been on the main show. I believe he was no. on the Killer Countdown um, a while back, ranking the John Carpenter film. So I'm glad to have him on the main show, and we get to talk about Mysterious Skin. 
So that'll be next week's episode. Once again, Jimmy and Cody, thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll have you guys back on at, at some point to, to talk movies. And uh, yeah, we were, I'm just really glad we got to do this. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, me I think too. This was a good, strong way to start June, I think. Yes. All right. Thank you all again for listening to the show. And we'll check you out next time on the back lot of South Dakota. Hey guys, Casey here. I just wanted to leave off with uh, one more thing. Uh, when we recorded this episode at the end, as you heard, uh, we had originally planned for Mysterious Skin with Jake Martin to be our next episode. Uh, we had a few scheduling things come up, uh, so that will actually be two weeks from now when we have Jake on to talk about uh, Mysterious Skin, so be on the lookout for that. But next week's episode will be our episode with Corey Jacobson, and we are going to be discussing the film Hedwig and the Angry inch so that'll be next week's episode with um our episode with jake martin on on mysterious skin being after that so once again big big thank you to jimmy and cody for joining us on this episode and anyway thank you guys for listening and uh, we'll see you next week